If you are a beginner and would like to know how to draw a beetle and a few very easy steps, you are watching the right video. Hey, I'm Leila. Welcome to my studio. To follow along, you would need these materials. A piece of paper, graphite pencils, erasers, and something for smudging like a smudge stick or a tissue. So you want to grab a pencil that is not too hard and not too soft. You can see that by the HB markings. So H stands for hard and B stands for black. This pencil is right in the middle. Now the beetle that we're going to draw is a hoo-hoo beetle. It's an insect that lives in New Zealand. And when it's in its grub stage, which is called a hoo-hoo grub, Apparently, it's eatable for both humans and animals. And people who have tried them say they taste just like peanut butter. I don't know. I can't tell you if they do. I've never tried one. Okay, so to start sketching, what we want to do is we want to draw a prolonged oval, just like this. Now, if you're just starting to learn how to draw, I would like to give you a few tips on the first stages of creating your composition. You don't want to press on the pencil too hard and create a dark line because it will be much harder to remove it in case you decide to change your composition, make things bigger or smaller. So whenever you start to work, make sure that you always use very, very soft lines. Also notice how I hold the pencil rather than holding it like this, which will make sure that you are creating a very dark line. Hold it like this, a little bit further away, and very gently, as if you're holding a feather. And then thin lines will happen themselves. Here, you need to add the oval. And this is what the step will look like when you're finished with it. Next, we want to give it a little bump right at the front there. So that would be its face, its head. And here we can put two ovals. They're more like squashed circles for the eyes. Now next, what we want to do is we want to give it two long antennae. And here we go. Right from where the eyes are, just above the eye here, you want to go and create a line and curve it a little bit like that at the end. Same on the other side. At this stage your drawing probably looks a little bit like that. Next we want to mark where the legs are going to go. And you see how we're using very very simple shapes and lines to structure everything. Complicating things right in the beginning is where all the trouble sits. So we want to go as basic and as simple as possible. Here we're going to put lines. So remember how we've done this oval here. So from this oval we're going to do a line like this and then a line like that and then another line and even a little hook like that. Okay, so you've got it. So here we go. A line they don't have to be the same, by the way. You know, just like when you sit on the chair, one leg can be straight, the other one can be folded. Same thing with beetles. So they don't need to mirror each other. So I've got one line there, one line there, another one here, and then a little hook. There we go. So the other set of legs comes from this part. So very close to this one, but a little bit more from under the shell here. So we'll go and then another one and then another little one and then a hook. Same on the side, a line, another line, another little line and then a hook. And the last set of legs and here we go. So these legs are coming from, you know, where that main body shape is. So we've got a little bit protruding here, going down almost, 
almost to the length of the body but not quite and then another one and a hook same on the side a leg one part another part a line and then a hook you see how simple it is once you break everything down into little segments this is what it probably looks like on your drawing by now okay next we can look into more details now i know it might sound scary but it's not because when you're doing things step by step it actually makes things easy so you can see how here we're just adding a little bit more a little like a little circle on the top here and a line this is where the two shells for the wings actually meet so when the beetle flies it opens up and it flies they're actually quite large these beetles not as large as of course i'm drawing it here but they can grow up to five centimeters in length next we, we will need a softer pencil so it's also a graphite pencil but it is see how it says 2b over here which means it twice as soft so the higher the number before the letter the stronger its quality so b is a soft dark black pencil which makes it twice as soft and we're going to start shading now if we look closely at the wings of the beta we will see that there is a pattern but we are not going to worry about it now we are just going to softly go over the whole body of the beetle just like this now have you noticed again how i'm holding the pencil i'm not holding it like this i'm holding it like that on the side it makes it so much easier to shade with a very light hand and doing the same thing with the rest of the body now next you can grab your smudge stick if you have one or you can use a tissue simply by folding it like this and then pressing with your finger and smudging if you have a smudge stick you can do the same with a smudge stick never use your finger to smudge graphite pencil because we have oils and moisture on our skin which will absorb into the paper if you're using your fingers and that's not very good for the paper it's going to make it oily and blotchy so at this stage your drawing will probably look something like this next with the same pencil we can get into more details so if we look very closely at the antenna we will actually see that they are made up of different segments so we can do that now while we are shading now if you work on both of the antenna at the same time you are more likely to do them in a very similar way so adding a little section to one side and then the other will make it easier for you to keep both sides very balanced here we have another section you can turn your paper around if you need that to make things a little bit more comfortable so there we go so now we've marked the antennae let's have a look at the legs remember how we did those lines so now what you can do is you can build up on them so you've got this line here let's make another line right next to it and we can shade it in i'm not going all dark but just a, a little bit of a gray shade in there and then same to this line here as well just a little bit and then this section here is actually quite wide it has these little teeth so i will show you how to do those so you do a line like this and then just put a few marks in like that and almost make it like a little triangle a little dot or a joint last little section with the hook and now repeat the same thing on the other side
This is what it should probably look like by now on your drawing as well. If you are enjoying this video, you can go and check out my Patreon page, where you can find even more tutorials and more fun activities like winning the sketches, voting for what you want to see next, and so much more. Please go over there and check it out. Now, let's do the other legs. Same thing. We want to widen them and then shade them in. And the last set of legs. Now we will come back to the legs and add more things later on, but for now I would like to work a little bit more on the head and the rest of the body. So we've got these little nippers here at the front, we can shade those in as well. Now I've got the eyes. The eyes are quite dark and they don't seem to be shiny at all, they're quite matte so we won't bother with the highlights. Now this part of the body is a little bit fluffy, this is where you can use this motion of the pencil to make it look really fuzzy. We can darken now around this spot as well here. Let's darken a little bit on the shell, on the sides. Because the beetle is three-dimensional, so it stands up, so the top part catches the most light, appears a little bit lighter to us. At this stage you can grab your smudge stick or your tissue paper and very carefully go over again and give it a little light smudge like this. Don't worry about smudging the legs, just the body. Your drawing should look something like this right now. Next we want to darken some areas. So now I'm going to stop using the 2B pencil and I'm going to go even to the softer one. If you don't have a 6B, any other softer pencil would do the trick. So some of the areas that are quite dark, like these nippers for example, and the eyes, and some of the fluff is quite dark. You do want to use a very fine thin pencil with a nice sharp point. If you do have one of these mechanical pencils, you can use that instead. Okay, now it's time to look at the pattern on the wings. For that, we're going to use an eraser. Now, you can use a putty eraser, if you have one, where you can just shape it like this and create any kind of thin line out of it, like that. If you don't have it, that's not a problem, because what you can do is you can just slice a little piece of your eraser with a knife and then you will have a very nice clean sharp edge. So here we can take this eraser and we can put two parallel lines almost all the way down to the bottom of the of the shells for the wings and same on the other side. Just like that. So you are drawing but now you are drawing with the eraser. Then we're going to put more, two more lines, one on each side, one here like that and another one on the other side. If your lines are a little bit wonky that's not a problem and you will see why very soon. So now we've got stripes on the beetle. Next two more stripes, this time coming from the outside, one on each side there and there you want to put little segments so if you think about it the pattern on the wings kind of resembles a little bit the pattern on the leaves of the tree or a plant and as you put them on one side make sure you put them on the other that way it'll be much easier to keep things in balance and almost reflecting each other they don't have to necessarily completely reflect each other but they should look a little bit similar to each other so just like that so a few sections this way and now we're going to put some sections between these lines as well. So just keep adding these lines and from what I can see on all the images all the beetles have them a little bit different from each other. We can add some 
almost like little cells like that. See, I'm just putting a line like this and then following it to the center where, where the wings meet. You can keep turning your piece of eraser around. When you are getting rid of these little eraser bits, be careful not to do it like this with your hand because there is a danger of completely smudging things. You can carefully blow on your artwork, but the best is to either turn it over and do this, or use something like this, like a bird feather that you can just brush things away without the danger of smudging things really badly. Still using the 2B pencil, I'm going to start shading in between these lines. But at this stage, your drawing should probably look something similar to this. So now, let's darken some of the areas, starting from up here. So when I'm shading now, and you see how I'm holding my pencil further to the back, I'm actually going to be shading these separate sections with the eraser. Just make sure you leave them as they are. And you can darken some areas. You don't need to darken everything but just in some areas like this. I'm not even going to do anything on this area here, you know, right in, in the middle there, because as I said before, there's quite a bit of light that hits it, but closer to the bottom, you can just relax and keep shading it. This is also a good time to create a little bit more contrast, like this just on the outside, and same on the other side. Okay, our beetle is really getting there. Now you can use your smudge stick or your tissue paper again. But if you're using a tissue, make sure you get a really nice point by folding it like this and going around and just giving it a, a little bit of a smudge right in between these sections. If you carry a little bit of a graphite onto the uh, lighter lines, that's not a problem because we can always go over them with a the razor again and would have to do this soon anyway. If you do have a smudge stick, it makes the job a little bit easier because you can go a little bit firmer and press on it. So by now your drawing will probably look something similar to this. Okay, now let's leave the body for a little bit and go back to the other bits and pieces like the antennae and the legs. Here we can widen some of the things if you need to or, you know, add little details, like maybe little spots and dots and you can go into a little bit more detail on the legs as well like remember the parts just like with us humans the parts that are closer to our body are a little bit thicker and wider and parts that are a bit f growing further down are a bit thinner same with tree branches and so on so you want to make sure that the parts of the beetle's legs that are closer to the body are a little bit wider and this is where I would suggest that you guys add a little bit more of the shadow, just a bit on the outside of these parts. So I'm not shading everything the same tone, which is called value, the dark and the light, and the artwork are called values. Okay, so what we want to do is just darken a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other, and mimic the way the light falls, falls onto the areas we need to look a little bit more carefully at the at the joint it's kind of like the knees you know that we have knees and kneecaps and all that so you kind of want to give a little knee to the beetle as well and then this part here is probably thinner than this one so we can leave it that way you can make it wider depending on you know what your drawing looks like at this stage next we've got this part that we did so if you haven't done those little triangular bits then when we were doing them you need to do them now and the little hooks and let's go over and do the same thing with all the other legs as well so just thicken them a little bit more and give them the darker more intense shadow on the sides like that usually if we look very closely we would be able to see that the little hooks and the ends of the insect legs usually have little like little spikes or little hooks coming out and that is to make it easier for them to grab onto things when they're climbing or moving around and same on the other legs as well we want to make them a little bit wider the parts that are closer to the body and create a little bit of the shadow on both sides a little bit of a shadow close to the body as well so you want to do all the same things that we've done on the other legs, on these hind legs. 
now we almost have our little bug sitting here on the page we, what we want to do is we want to do last minute adjustments so you want to build up the shoulders a little bit more here make these areas quite dark also where the wings are where they meet where they join it's almost like a little sort of a thing like that at the end that you can see if you look at any of the images of these hoo hoo beetles we can make the joint for the wings a little bit more prominent as well that split now that you have this bug sitting on your piece of paper that it already recognizable this is what it is what we can do is we can give it a little bit more of the um, touches so if you've got a putty eraser like this you can just give it sort of a, this kind of a shape not too sharp just not too dull as well and you can just pick out a little bit of the graphite of the paper so what we're doing here is we are emphasizing the highlight because the, sh the shells that go over the wings are not necessarily shiny, but they're not matte either. So you get a little bit of that reflection of them. So we can create a little bit of that. And so we're both going over the lines and over the other bits and pieces as well. We can see uh, a little bit more of the highlight here as well but not as much on the sides or the back. We can also give a little bit of the highlight to this area as well and this area as well. Now, what do you do if you don't have a putty eraser? We go back to our little slice and so what you want to do here is you want to very gently go over and do this motion and that will help you lift up some of the graphite as well. The only downside is that this can also do a little bit of smudging, which means you would need to go over the lighter lines, lighter stripes afterwards and to refresh them, which we will do anyways. Okay, so now that we have this beetle, you know, here, you can clean off the sides like this if you smudged anywhere and you can say that this is your drawing of a beetle that is completely finished. So, if you by any chance have smudged any of these lines, you can, you want them lighter, you can go over them again. Remember, the drawing is never completely finished until that's it, you put it away and you say it's finished. So you can keep working on this for a while if you want to be correcting things or adding things and so on. So more lines here, here. You can add new lines at this stage, just make sure that they all work within the pattern of the specific beetle. Here we go. If you want to, you can also add a little bit of the highlights in the legs as well. Just in some areas, not everywhere, just, you know, those areas that, that sort of stand up a little bit more. Now we can say that the drawing is finished, and if this is what you are after, then you can say that's that. But if you would also like to learn how to draw a shadow for the beetle, make sure to stick around because that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so if you decided to stay for the shadow, you can use the 2B pencil and create very softly darker lines. Now these lines are not supposed to be as dark as the legs themselves okay so quite light see just like that in fact these lines are uh, appear a little bit darker when they are closer to the actual leg and as they move further away from the leg where it's touching the ground they become a little bit lighter so here we have one here we have another one, another one. Now here on this side, we can see a little bit more of the shadow from the body as well. So we want to just put a little bit of this like that in here. Just a little bit of the shading on the side. 
a little bit where the head is as well. Now the shadows are formed when the light that is falling onto the surface is blocked by an object or a subject. So if you have a table with light falling on it, it will all be quite light. But if you have, for example, a cup standing on that table, the areas where the cup is blocking the sunlight, for example, if it's sunlight, there will be a shadow. It's called a cast shadow. It's pretty much a shadow that falls off the object. So it's the shadow that is being cast by the object. So this is the kind of a shadow that we are working on now. A little bit on that side there. But you see how I'm going very softly. That's that's one of the main tricks. And at this stage, we can go in for the smudge stick or your tissue paper, if that's what you're using to smudge. Now, while you're smudging, you can smudge it so that the outlines of the shadow are actually quite soft. You don't want them to be super sharp, especially the ones that are further away from the actual areas where the body of the beetle is touching the paper. Now if you don't have a smudge stick and you are using a tissue and these little fine little lines you're finding it tricky to sort of a, you know get in there like that. But you can but if it is quite you know if it's quite hard you can always use a cotton swab like this and very softly go into the areas that are quite small. Here we can also add a little bit of the darkness you know for the antenna but because they're so far away from the from the ground, they probably won't be casting a very contrasty shadow. Now at this stage your drawing should look something like this. You can say also that it's done, but I would what I would like to do now, because we did the shadow here, some of the areas I think on the actual beetle would need to be shaded in a little bit more. So the first thing that we need to pay attention to are the shadows that are quite close to the legs of the subject. So we need to make them just a little bit darker and a little bit, just a little bit more contrasting so that they stand out a bit more. Next, we need to see if we need to add a little bit of any kind of shading to the actual body, so to make body, the body of the beetle a little bit darker. Again, this is not something that you have to do, but I would like to do that just to create a bit more of the contrast in the artwork. And same on the other side. Now we can use a smudge stick or your um, tissue paper or the uh, cotton buds for some smudging. Okay, so this is probably similar to what uh, your beetle looks like as well. Now if you still have time and you would like to keep working on this, you can always go in with the softer pencil, you know, the 6B, and you can really, really bring out some of the dark areas because as you can see the beetle's legs and things are quite dark. If you are happy to stop where you are, then you can do that too. If you feel that this is finished now, which it pretty much is, you can go and you can still tidy up some of the things if you need to. Um, do not get rid of the haziness around the shadow areas, but you can just tidy up some of the maybe smudge you know, areas if you're touching it with your hands or something like this, or pencil fell or a line that's a little bit out of line. Um, you can always get rid of those, just like this, just cleaning this up a little bit. If you have gone over the lines too much, you can always go back and clean them up either with the putty eraser or your little off-cut. Okay, so here we go. See, it wasn't that hard. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that when I edit videos, I cut out a lot of repetitive motions, so I show you how to do something and explain about it, but to make these videos shorter, I don't go on through the whole process. So please feel free to pause the video to finish to the stage that you're working on and then watch a little bit more and repeat the process. So don't feel that you need to keep up with the speed that I'm showing you this tutorial in the video. And another thing to remember is that if you're just starting up, you don't always need to invest into very expensive products and go and buy a whole bunch of art supplies. You can always start with just using a printer paper and a few pencils, a razor, some of the smudging materials 
that you can find around your house. Of course, if you keep working and you keep progressing, you can always go and, and get extra things. But to start with, you don't need to wait for any special materials. You can always just start with what you've got on hand. I also want to say a big, big thank you to my wonderful, wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel. If you would like to know more about smudging material substitutes, about pencils, what different things stand for, I have videos on that as well, so make sure to check them out. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, and as always, thank you so much for drawing with me.